Hello and welcome to the December 2009 Chemical of the Month. Today we're going to do a real-time scenario. Our scenario today is this. On a cold winter night, a tanker truck went off a two-lane highway and wound up in the ditch. The tanker truck is a DOT 331 and it is laying on its side. The driver extricated himself and called 911. He reported a hissing sound near the valves of the tanker and that his fully loaded shipment is 1,3 butadiene. The weather today is temperature is 0 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind is slight at 5 miles per hour from the north. Our first step in our process is the dispatch and size up step. It usually only takes about 20 seconds. But the first question we want to ask from smart chart number two is this. Does the product name appear on the alphabetical list? When we look at that alphabetical list, we see that it does not. There are no numbers on that list, and butadiene is also not present. So therefore, this makes it a above-the-line chemical or a red box type chemical with traits of flammability. It most likely will be a liquid or a gas, and it's going to have uh, other type of characteristics that we're going to look into. So with our first step again being dispatch and size up, we need to look at a, a few things with our smart charts. Smart chart number three, we have the flammable name clue box that also talks about char chemicals or chemicals that will burn because they have carbon and hydrogen content. This is where we see the prefix but, which is part of our chemical name, 1,3-butadiene. What this means is this prefix tells us that it's also going to be a family name with the rest of smart chart number three. So we look at what ends in ene, and that is the name clue box number three. This is the family of chemicals that are flammable, toxic, they end in ene or ene, and they also can polymerize. So we highlight this box, and it tells us that we'll need a temperature gun to enter on this uh, incident and look for chemical extremes. We'll also need a combustible gas indicator. A PID and FID will work for determining airborne concentrations, along with tubes and chips. For PPE, we'll also use turnout gear and SCBA up to 10% of the LEL. So essentially, this is a red 3 chemical from our playbook. So step number two is the respond and verification step. We're going to make sure that we get the right information so we're on track. And from smart chart number five, we can see the steps. So step two is the research step where we verify information. Again, we think that we have above the line chemical here with our size up, which gives us a flammable gas type of product. It's also going to be somewhat toxic. It polymerizes and the vapors are going to be heavier than air. We go to our research books and we see in the NIOSH pocket guide that 1,3-butadiene is listed. And when we compare it to our size up informa information, we're going to verify. So the first thing that we'll look at is it, it's described as a colorless gas and it's going to be a liquid below 24 degrees Fahrenheit, but still going to have a vapor pressure. That's what we call the all states information or the A of our ABCs. We also look at the B of the ABCs for breathing, and this is classified as a carcinogen, and it's 10% LEL is the IDLH. The C of the ABCs is the chemical information, so we'll look at the chemical and physical properties. We see that the molecular weight of 1,3-butadiene is 54 atomic mass units. That tells us it's greater than 29, so that says it's going to be heavier than air, and that's what the R gas D information tells us. This is about twice as heavy as air. We also look at the boiling point and we see that at 24 degrees Fahrenheit, this material will readily vaporize and turn into a vapor or gas at 24 Fahrenheit. So today is our temperature is zero degrees Fahrenheit, so the vapor pressure will be high, but it'll, it'll remain as a liquid for a, a brief period of time. We also look at the vapor pressure. At room temperature, it wants to be a gas very badly, 2.4 atmospheres. We also see that it has a flammable range of 2 to 12 percent, so we are indeed dealing with a flammable material here. When we look at the uh, DOT guide information, 116P, it tells us that this can polymerize. 
So yes, we do have a polymerization type hazard here. We also know that this is not a corrosive type material and it's not radioactive, but we can see that the IP is 9 electron volts, which says that our PID is a PID yes in this situation. It's also an FID yes because it chars. It just has carbon and hydrogen in its formula. So when we look at step three, the arrival and get to work step, we already know what we have to look at here for our protection to enter. enter. So we look at our mission as a reconnaissance mission. We want to gather information, make an entry, and find out what's going on. So for this, we need PPE in the form of turnout gear and SCBA. It's a thermal type hazard, so turnout gear will help us in case of a flash. Also, meters that we'll select are right from smart chart number three again, the temperature gun to look for where the release may be coming from, also the CGI to look for flammable atmospheres, the PID and FID will also work to look for uh, airborne concentrations, along with tubes and chips. So our final step is number four, the entry in step and the size up step for what work we need to do. So again, we're going to look at smart chart number five to guide us here with the red light, green light information, and then how it's mission driven. So again, our mission is to enter for reconnaissance, to gather information, and make a determination on what type of work we'll have to do to take care of the product. Also, recognize your red lights and pay attention to your data feedback from your instruments and know when to get out. For instance, the CGI, anything greater than 10% means that you should exit. That's a red light situation. And then we need to determine what is needed next based on what we find from our entry, our original entry. And then finally, discuss the make it safe actions that you'll need to, to do on location to make the incident scene safe for people to enter and then take care of the problem. problem. So this uh, has been a uh, chemical of the month for 1,3-butadiene, December 2009. We looked at it in real time, what it takes to go through the four steps, the 20-second size-up step, the two-minute verification step. Step three is gathering our, our PPE and meters to make an entry and step four is the actual entry to get more information on what we need to do to mitigate this incident. So until next month folks, take care, live well, think smart, stay safe.